Let's hear our beautiful musicians on this next verse. verse to the glory of God. He knows the world with truth and grace and makes the nations The glory of His righteousness and wonders of His can do better than that. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. I don't know about you, but it's December. We're in the last month of the year, and we're still here in the land of the living. If God's been good to you this year, if you can testify that God is still making a way, you ought to give God some praise. It's been a long year, and an even longer week. I've been wrestling with a lot of things this week. And so have you. You may be seated. Sometimes when things get real hard, though, I, I, I sing a song that says, I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some, some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I, I look around, I think things over all of my my good days they outweigh my my bad days and I I won't complain song says sometimes the clouds hang low that I I can hardly see the road and I ask the the question Lord I said why 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 so much pain but he knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes, they can't see. So in spite of all that's going on in 12 Baptists today, I'm going to say, thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I, I won't complain. Because God knows what's best for me. Maybe it's just you. I, I, I'll talk for myself. He, than this whole world or you could ever be he's been so good he's been so good to me 
He tried every one of my tears away. I don't know about you, but I cried sometimes this week. And then he turned, turned my midnights into day. So on this Sunday morning, in spite of being tired, I'm going to say thank you, Lord. I've been protesting all week. No matter how bad I feel sometimes, I'm going to say thank you, Lord. Maybe you've been sick. Your body's rocking with pain. I want you to still say thank you, Lord. I'm still here in December, and I've seen others go before me. I'm going to say thank you, Lord. I may have been abused. I may have been wrestling with some struggles, but I'm going to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. so good to me oh God you've been good to me more than this whole world of you any one of you could ever be God's been so good to me And I think he can do this right now. Turn my midnight sin today. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. And I, I won't, I won't complain. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me oh blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you thank you Jesus Come on, can we say that again, sir? Oh, I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done. Oh, I said blessings and glory, glory and honor. For blessing, bless me. Oh, I just want to praise you forever, forever and ever for all God's done, you've done. I said blessings and glory and honor, they are to you. Thank you, Jesus, 
for my lesson. See me. Can we take it higher? Oh, I just wanna praise you forever and ever and ever. Blessings and glory and honor, they are. I thank you, Jesus, for blessing. I think I'm gonna take it up one more time till I get you out your feet. Oh, I just wanna praise you forever and ever. I think I got a few more in the seat. Oh, I just want to praise you. We're going to give God the highest praise in forever and ever. For you got for me. Come on. It says blessings and glory. Blessings and glory and honor, and they all I said, Blessings and glory and honor, they all I said, Blessings and glory, glory and honor, they all Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For oh, blessing me. Come on, give God some praise in here today. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. for keep on blessing me and he's getting ready to bless us some more through his word this morning so if you would turn with me for those of you if you want to use the pew bibles turn to page 1647 the word this morning is coming out of john 1 chapter 1 verses 1 through 18 and that is on the page 1647 for the Pew Bibles, amen. It's good when we can feast on the word of God. Word that just keep on giving, mm, mm, mm. hallelujah. Preacher gonna be preaching this morning from this word, amen. The word became flesh. In the beginning was the word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. 
the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, his glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of the fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the only, the one only son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Let us feast on the word of God. Amen.
Let us turn to the Lord in prayer. O oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Lord, you are a mighty God. Yes, you are. are a wonderful counselor. Amen. And Lord, you can do anything but fail. Lord, you could certainly do this without me. But I cannot do it without you. Thank you for your placement. Thank you for your calling. I thank you for your anointing. Yes. And now may you use this time, use, them, use the words of this, your servant, to your honor and glory, I pray. Yes. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again, church. Amen. Shout it out to the glory of God. Amen. And now, my beloved, if you have your Bibles, um, <clears throat> and I pray that you should always have your Bibles with you, but if you do not have your Bible with you, please take one of the pew Bibles. They are brown in color. Hold them up and wave them and repeat after me the glory of God. This is my Bible. This is my guide to living. Now let's shout it out to the glory of God. This is my Bible. And this is my guide to living. Bless his holy name. Now that you have your Bibles in your hands, I invite you to turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, begin at verse 1. When you have it, say amen. amen. Now, Minister Crockton, uh, profoundly, proficiently, and prophetically, I've already read these uh, verses with you, but I would just like to lift up one verse, just one verse for emphasis. Now, in reverence for the Word of God, I invite you to stand as I read this verse from the New International Version of the Bible. Follow along, if you will, as I begin reading at the 14th verse of the first chapter of the Gospel of John, found on page 1647 of your pew book. It reads this way, the Word became flesh 
and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one, the only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now I repeat after me and say, Thank God he came. Now turn to your neighbor, look at your neighbor, smile at the neighbor, tell that neighbor, you looking good today. <laughs> and then say, neighbor, neighbor. Thank, God thank God he came. Turn to another neighbor in your vicinity, give that neighbor a high five. And then, you know, uh, my, my, my folks told me, don't ever point at people, but I want you to wave that finger at that person and say, neighbor, neighbor. Thank, God thank God he came. And if you were not sitting next to somebody and there's somebody, let's just shout it out to the glory of God. Neighbor, neighbor. Thank, God he came. thank God he came. Marvelous and wonderful. You may be now seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, my sisters and brothers. Peace be unto you that are mighty in battle and humble in spirit. This is the word of God that has come to me from God for the people of God. Now, some of you may recall that we shared with you last Sunday from that same passage out of uh, the Gospel of John, but we went a little bit further to capture now the 14th verse, which is what we're concentrating on today. Advent ought to be a time of the year that the Word of God takes on renewed, restored, and revived significance and meaning for believers of the Lord Jesus Christ and even for the world community. You know, there's a little debate going on down there in Boston about the uh, public library. Did y'all hear about that one? Where well, they got some reefs decorating the library, but some of our Jewish breth brethren and sisters, they said, they, well, there should be, uh, what did they say, a tour? Yeah, okay. She said she paid for it. That's all right, but she can't pay for Christ. Uh, but this is Christmas. And see, we have to remember, it is Christmas. It's not a season for shopping. It's not a season for, for getting, but it's a season of giving because Christ has given to us. You see, on this second Sunday in Advent, I have come unto you with a greater sense of hope because of the, the greatest event in human history. We've seen a lot as we live, but nothing as great as this event. Amen. See, even across this nation, as countless communities and people of color, of every color and racial hue, demonstrate for human dignity and justice in a nation that has proclaimed liberty and justice for all. all right. Our nation is still reeling over the unjust deaths of persons of color across our nation. More notably, recently, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, and others across our nation, a 12-year-old boy in Ohio. It's just catastrophic what's happening to black males and how their lives have been taken many times by police who are there to serve and protect. But the greatest event in human history is that because the turning point of the civilization of human, humanity over 2,000 years ago when Jesus came into the world to save all of us from sin, death, hell, and the grave. For you see, my beloved, until Jesus Christ was manifested to take away our sins and the sin of the world, as the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 5, but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. That's why he showed up 
not to sing Silent Night, not to sing Holy Night, but he came, he showed up to take away our sins of the world. Before Jesus came into the world, we were helplessly and hopelessly lost and on our way to hell. But when Jesus came, he changed all that. Uh, you see, hallelujah goes right there. Somebody say hallelujah. Because without him, we would be lost in our trespasses and sins. God the Father promised Adam and Eve that the Savior would come to redeem us in, June, in, De in December, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. Daniel had prophesied that the Messiah would surely come in Daniel 9, 25 through 26. See, Isaiah in 9 and 6 foretold us that he would come and that the government would be upon his shoulders and that his name would be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And thank you, Sidney, for putting that up. I know the building roof is maybe not as strong as we'd like it, but we need to have a strong message for Christ in this community. Amen. See, the psalmist has testified in Psalms 22 that he would surely come, that he would come, but that he would suffer muchly. Micah in 5 and 2 had proclaimed that he would surely come and that he would be born in the town of Bethlehem. Malachi in 4 and 2 had announced that he would surely come and said that the son of righteousness would arise with healing in his wings. As a matter of fact, Adam and Abel, Melchizedek and Abraham and Joseph and Job and Moses and Aaron and Joshua and Samuel and David and Solomon and Jeremiah, Elijah and Elisha and Jonah, Hosea alone all prophesied with a host of others believing that he was coming and he did come. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You see, although the skeptics doubted that he would ever come, he still came. Yeah. The hypocrites hoped that he would never come. Yeah. He still came. Yeah. The heathens ignored the fact that he would ever come, but he still came. The agnostics denied the possibility of his coming, but he still came. The heretics despised the thought that he would come, but he still came. The idealists thought that he didn't need to come, but he still came. And although the devil tried to hinder him from coming, he still came. And like the old folks say, he does not necessarily come when we want him, but he always, he always comes on time. See, I serve an on-time God. For you see, my beloved, heaven with all its beauty could not keep him from coming. The angels with all their singing could not keep him from coming. The earth with all of its corruption, then, now, and going forward could not keep him from coming. Mankind with all their rebellion, you know, we're a rebellious lot, could not keep him from coming. Sin with all of its strength could not keep him from coming. And even a robe of flesh with all of its limitations, which he wore, could not keep him from coming to redeem us from sin, death, hell, and the grave. You see, my beloved, the Bible, the Bible says in John 1 and 14, that the word became flesh and made his dwelling, hallelujah, among us. We have not seen his glory, 
the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes. Now, uh, there are three things I would like to, uh, you to consider briefly from our text. First of all, the Word became flesh. Secondly, the Word dwelt amongst us. And then thirdly, because of the word, we will see his glory. Three thoughts. Uh, down throughout the ages, through the chronicle of time, humanity has built up the image of God from within the corners of our minds. We have created idols of silver, and gold, and brass, and wood, hoping to capture the essence of the supreme being who could be credited for our blessings and cursing in life. From the great pyramids of Egypt to the charms, the dolls, and fetish, fetishes of island voodoo, from Michelangelo's ceiling in the Sistine Chapel to the multifaceted stained glass windows of our local church. Humanity has sought to capture the divine in some unique form. We are people who need visible evidence of God's existence, amen? amen. Uh, we have tied into that model that many of us use, seeing is believing. But we will not always see, church. We need some signs that he is omnipresent in our lives. We want a God that is with us and about us as we travel throughout our earthly existence. Oh, we may not have built false idols, but we too want a manifestation of God's power, love on earth. Uh, some of us often say, Lord, help us, help me. Or Lord, help me to get through the mess that I got myself into. Or we may say, Lord, if only you allow me to make this mega buck or power ball hit tonight, I'm gonna give 10% to the church. That is why the Bible says, <laughs> the Word, the Word became flesh. God knew that for the redemption of humankind, he would have to send his only begotten Son from heaven's glory to earth's shame, from heaven's bliss to earth's sorrow, from heaven's beauty to earth's disgrace, from heaven's purity to earth's misery, God knew that he would have to send his son from heaven's peace to an earth's turmoil. But secondly, the word dwelt amongst us. Praise the Lord goes right there. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Uh, we serve a God who is not removed from us and who came amongst us and has been touched by our afflictions. See, the Bible says in 1 John and 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. But the Bible also says in Isaiah 53, four and five, surely, somebody say surely. surely. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But, somebody say but. but. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement 
of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Uh, for you see, my beloved, when he came, he came not to hurt, but to heal. He came not to condemn, but to save. He came not to cast down, but to lift up. He came not to bind, but to deliver. He came not to frustrate, but to clarify. He came not to, to disrespect, but to ensure that all be respected. He came not to hate, but to love. And when he came, he came not to reject, but to receive those who would receive him as their Lord and Savior. If you want a chance to have eternal life, you have to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And let me just tell you, he's better than the money you got in the bank. He's better than the food that you have on your table. He's better than that old body that you have is breaking down and can't do what it used to do. Because he can give you a new body, a new walk, a new talk. And if you can't sing, you can sing in the choirs of heaven with the angels and rejoice in the Lord. But thirdly and finally, my brothers and sisters, because the word did come, we now will see his glory. Hmm. Lawrence Hoseman, the English playwright and illustrator once said, light looked down and beheld darkness, thither will I go, said light. Peace looked down and beheld war, thither will I go, said peace. Love looked down and beheld hatred. Tither will I go, said love. So came light and shone. So came peace and gave rest. So came love and brought life. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. But John says, what drew the disciples to our Jesus was not the glide of his stride or the finesse of his physique. <laughs> it wasn't the color of his skin or the height of his stature. No, John says, we have beheld his glory, the glory as the only son from the Father. Well, what is that glory that surpasses human appearance? What is this glory that made Jesus the light of men and pierced humanity's darkest soul? If we were to venture to the pages of the Old Testament, we would read of the Shekinah glory revealed to the Hebrew children during the wilderness wandering after the escape from Egypt. We saw through the writings in, in, in Exodus of how God showed up and showed up to help his people to move forward. And what we got to do as a people is to go to God in prayer. We love politicians. Uh, but, but, but they can't get us to where God would have us to be. You know, we, we like the police force. Uh, some of us do. But, but the police can't get us to where we need to be. Uh, we uh, uh, like to think that we have the president of the United States who happens to be a person of color, but he can't get us to where we need to be. Only Christ son of the living God can move us to where he would have us to be so that there will be peace on earth. You got a lot of folks out there demonstrating from New York and Boston to, the, to Los Angeles, California, marching for peace. 
but they should be turning their eyes to Jesus, looking full on his marvelous face. And the things of this world will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let me just say to you, there is nothing too great for God to do if the people of God will humble themselves and pray, turn from your wicked way, seek his face. He will hear from heaven and he will heal this land. What is the glory that made Jesus the light of men that pierced humanity's darkest soul? If we were to venture to the pages of Old Testament, that's the, the kind of glory that we read in Scripture. The glory they saw was a pillar by cloud, by day, and fire by night. It was the glory that assured them of the real presence of God with them. It was the type of glory that showed excellence beyond perfection and merit beyond achievement. The glory they saw left them amazed, speechless, and awestruck. What they saw in him was beyond their human imagination. Jesus was awesome. We serve an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. To behold Jesus was to behold the glory of life itself. It was to behold the heavens and the universe encircling the creator's brow. It was to behold the mountains and the rolling hills top standing firm upon God's shoulders. It was to behold the birds of the air and the beasts of the fields impressed upon his breast. It was to behold the lilies of the valley and the rose of Sharon cascading down his back. It was to behold the depths of the ocean and the rolling waves of the seven seas rising at his waist. And to behold the glory of Jesus was to see the cosmos wrapped up in flesh dwelling amongst us. Well. What does that mean for us who were not there to see him born in a manger or bearing a wooden cross? What does it mean for us who did not see him feed 5,000 souls with two fish and five loaves, which we call a happy meal? What does it mean when John's testimony to us was who not who notwithstanding before the empty tomb on Easter Sunday morning. Uh, it means that we shall not really see God unless we consider his work in Christ for us. We need to receive that which our forefathers received in order to see this invisible God. We need to receive two precious gems that will allow us to behold God in his glory. They are called God's grace and God's mercy and his truth. For you see, with grace and truth came, he came. He came, his heart was full of love. His eyes were full of compassion. His hands were full of blessings. His life was full of obedience. Praise the Lord. His word was full of wisdom and his face was full of glory. When Jesus came to this earth, he came to preach good news unto the meek, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to proclaim the day of vengeance of our God. And he came to comfort all who mourn and to give them beauty for ashes and oil of joy for the morning and garments of praise of the spirit of heaviness. When he came, he came to seek to save those who were lost, to fill, fulfill the perfect will of the Father, to perfect forever the plan of salvation, to lay down his life for the helpless and the hopeless, and to establish his church upon the eternal truth of the rock, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Thank God he came. We needed him more than anything else. I thank God that my Savior came. He came not just 
to save me, but he came to save you. He just not did come to, to bless me, but he came to bless you. He just didn't come to help me, but he came to help you. He just didn't come to comfort me, but he came to comfort you too. And to just, he just didn't come for me, but he touched you and everybody and whoever else is in life, let them come unto him because he came for you. Thank God he came because without him, you would be helpless. Without him, you would be lost. Without him, you would be undone. Without him, you would be miserable. Without him, you would be wretched. Without him, you could do nothing. Without him, you would surely fail. Without him, you would be destined to no place but hell. I'm so glad he came. Hallelujah. And I'm going to serve him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to share him. I'm going to preach him. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to confess him. I'm going to live for him. I'm going to walk for him. I'm going to talk for him. I'm going to claim him every day of my hour. I'm going to love him till that day I die. And someday we shall all see him in his glory. We shall behold the king of glory. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God.